God bless all of you. Give us It's wonderful to be with you today. And hopefully my English will be clear enough for you. But it is an honor to be with all of you. And I know that you are in the thick of an intense spiritual battle. Amen. I wrote a Jezebel's War with America. It came out last August. But when I was writing the book, I knew I could have written the book with the title Jezebel's War with Europe. I just came back from Australia and preached it there, Jezebel's War with Australia. And over the years, I have followed many of the developments in Sweden, can certainly speak of Jezebel's War with Sweden. Something happened when I wrote this book. I was moved on supernaturally by God. It's as if everything began to connect one piece after the other, and it all fell in place for me spiritually. Uh, about 70% of the core of the book was written in six days. And when the book came out, the first printing sold out the first week. We've never had that happen. It was an indication to me that we were speaking something that others were feeling as well. So what do I mean when I speak of Jezebel or Jezebel's war? We're not talking about a person. We're not talking about a ghost from the past, but we are talking about a coalition of demonic powers. I want to remind you that in the Old Testament, Jezebel was probably the most wicked woman mentioned in the Bible. She was a pagan princess. Her father was the king of the Sidonians, and she married King Ahab of Israel. She was a fanatical idol worshiper. She was a murderer. She killed the prophets of God. And she was so powerful that she intimidated by fear. Think for a moment. The prophets were hiding in caves rather than speaking up and being killed. That's how intimidating she was. At one point, she intimidated the prophet Elijah, one of the most powerful men of God in the Bible. She intimidated him by fear, and he ran for his life at one point. She emasculated her husband Ahab. She took away his manhood and his authority. And she incited him to do evil. It says in 1 Kings 21 that he did evil, but that she incited him. She pushed him to do more. And in 2 Kings chapter 9, she is associated with sexual immorality and with sorcery. Now, what's interesting is that Jesus makes reference to a woman called Jezebel in the New Testament about a thousand years later when he speaks to the church of Thyatira in Revelation 2. He mentioned this woman who is a false prophet, so she's also associated with false spirituality. She seduces God's people into sexual immorality, and she teaches God's people to eat food sacrificed to idols. So there again, you have the false spirituality, you have idolatry, you have sexual immorality. And Jesus refers to her as Jezebel. Was that her actual name or the name that he gave her? It's interesting, though, same name, same spiritual characteristics. And what became clear to me suddenly in 2018 was that Jezebel was attacking America and Europe and different nations in the world. In other words, the same demonic forces or perhaps the same demonic principality 
that empowered Jezebel in the Old Testament, that empowered Jezebel in the New Testament, that these demonic powers were at work in a concerted way. In other words, it wasn't one thing here and one thing here, but rather a coalition of demonic forces working together to destroy. So let me break this down for you and illustrate what I'm talking about. Remember that Paul wrote in Ephesians 6 that we are wrestling with principalities and powers, that that is where our battle is. We don't hate people. We are not fighting people. We are fighting demonic powers. We read elsewhere in the New Testament that we are to resist the devil, submit to God, resist the devil. Paul wrote to the Corinthians and said we are not ignorant of Satan's devices. So let's look at these different things in our culture and in particular in Sweden today. And I will say a little, but because this is your country, you will think of many, many more examples. So first, the spirit of idolatry. G.K. Chesterton said, when a man stops believing in God, he doesn't then believe in nothing. He believes anything. So you have a nation turning away from faith in the God of the Bible, and many will become atheists, but many will now follow other things. For example, in Sweden, more than 20% of the people in your country say they believe in reincarnation. Half believe in mental telepathy, communicating with your thoughts. Nearly one in five believe in the power of lucky charms. A third of Swedes believe in new age medicine, like healing crystals. 20% would consider purchasing personal horoscopes. 10% would consult a medium, someone who claims to be able to communicate with the dead. And nearly two out of every five people in Sweden say that they believe in ghosts. In other words, you turn away from the one true God and you begin to worship any kind of God. So idolatry and then immorality, sexual immorality. Listen, as long as human beings have been on the earth since the fall of man, we have struggled with sexual immorality. But we have never dealt with what we are dealing with today with pornography on internet. You can just click on your phone, on your computer, on your tablet, and you can ex uh, access all kinds of pornography. Little children, children now in America as young as eight years old are accessing pornography. This is completely destroying people's lives. So idolatry, immorality, the plague of immorality through internet pornography, we've never had to deal with. Remember, Jezebel is associated with sexual immorality and seduction in 2 Kings, the ninth chapter. Now think of this also. In the ancient world, where you had idolatry, you had baby killing. You, you always had sacrificing of babies to idols. Now, it doesn't mention this specifically with Jezebel, but it is part of the spirit of idolatry. And today we have the rise of the baby killing spirit, where the pro-abortion movement becomes more and more militant where you just had a case with a Swedish, a Swedish midwife who would not participate in abortion, and she lost her job and lost her legal case. We understand that some women in a terrible crisis with great pain in their heart choose abortion. We're not talking about them. We're talking about those that want to proudly shout their abortion. 
we're talking about those that want to push for abortion later and later and later in the mother's pregnancy. And even in America, there is a push that if the baby survives abortion, you cannot give it medical care, you must let it die. We have marches in America now where women are literally proudly shouting their abortion. It is the spirit of Jezebel, the baby killing spirit. And then the spirit of radical feminism. You see it rising where women now despise men, where women despise marriage, where the family is looked at in negative terms, where marriage is looked at as an oppressive institution of men to keep women under control. We are not talking about a healthy feminism that esteems and honors women and that looks at them as equals in the society. We are talking about a radical feminism that hates men, that rejects any type of male leadership, any type of male authority. We see it rising. It is part of the spirit of Jezebel. And then also, as we saw happen to King Ahab in the Bible, and it is with this radical feminism that Jezebel emasculates men. Jezebel takes away godly male authority and makes men into idiots, into weaklings, into jerks. And it takes away the real gifting in the lives of women as well and perverts it. Again, we're not talking about a person we're talking about a demonic spirit, a coalition of demonic powers associated with idolatry, with sexual immorality, with baby killing, with radical feminism, with emasculating of men. And then with that also is the war on gender. Sweden has been leading the world in the war on gender. I mean, think of it. You have now introduced a gender-neutral pronoun, hen. Think of that. Your school system is tasked with breaking down gender stereotypes among children so that boys play with girls' toys and girls play with boys' toys, and you try to change their thinking about gender. Some of the activists in Sweden have argued that what you need to do is give your children different names. If it's a girl, give the girl a boy's name, a boy, a girl's name. This is part of a larger breaking down of the foundations that God has established. The point I'm making is that these things are not isolated, that the same demonic spirit trying to seduce a nation into pornography is the same demonic spirit behind abortion is the same demonic spirit behind emasculating men, is the same demonic spirit behind the war on gender turning men into women and women into men. This is where homosexual and transgender activism is going. Right now, a politician in Finland, a woman there, has risked her career by quoting from the Bible and holding to biblical values. She could lose her position because of this. There is a real attack on freedom of religion and freedom of speech in Scandinavia. I remember being in Norway probably about 20 years ago, maybe slightly over that, and in the city where we were, there was a radical lesbian bishop who was leading the church there. You talk about the spirit of Jezebel. You've seen the identical things in your country. We believe that God uses men and women in wonderful ways. We also recognize what is a perversion of his plan. So you have the celebration of homosexuality, the celebration of the war on gender. And if you speak against it, you will be put into a closet. 
those who came out of the closet want to put you in the closet. They want to silence you. Make no mistake about it. Just like in the book of Esther, everyone had to bow down to Haman, but Mordecai refused to bow down. And Haman would not be satisfied until Mordecai bowed, and he wanted to destroy Mordecai and all of his people. I tell you, the same thing will happen to you, that the activists will not be satisfied until you bow down to their agenda and until you are silenced. And with that, the spirit of Jezebel also raises up witches and sorcery. It's remarkable now that we have a great rise of witchcraft in America. I understand where I'm speaking right now is a witchcraft stronghold. Connect the dots. This is all part of the same spiritual battle, and it is real. And with this comes the attempt to silence the prophetic voice of the church, to intimidate you, to make you afraid to speak out, to, to break down your authority and your faith. My brothers and sisters, this is a spiritual battle. I am not one to look at demons and focus on demons and think about demons. I focus on Jesus. I worship the Lord. I'm not worried about the power of Satan. I'm concerned about being right with Almighty God. At the same time, we are equipped to deal with the enemy, and we must recognize his work. And I have come into direct conflict with this demonic stronghold of Jezebel over the years. And it has been some of the worst spiritual battle that I have ever known in my life. I remember when my first book came out in America that focused on the message of repentance with the promise of revival. The very thing you're contending for now with the restoration of the church in Sweden and awakening in the nation, no sooner did I begin to bring that message that I came under severe demonic attack. And immediately I thought to myself, Jezebel is attacking Elijah. No, not that I'm Elijah, not that you are Elijah, but we bring the message of Elijah, the message of repentance and restoration. No sooner did I bring that message that my wife and I came under severe demonic attack. I didn't want to preach. I didn't want to speak. I was dealing with a spirit of fear that I never dealt with before. I had begun preaching in 1973 at the age of 18. So I had been preaching at this point more than 15 years, but suddenly I didn't want to speak. I felt like I had no authority. I had to pray for hours just to get my head clear. My wife was attacked with all types of sicknesses. We were bombarded in our mind with lies that we were, we were gonna be destroyed. And it was only through prayer and fasting and a prophetic word that the breakthrough came. A few years after that, I was ministering in India we were going to a city called Vijayawada. And in that city, there was a giant temple to Kanaka Durga, to a goddess that was worshiped in Andhra Pradesh, in the state of Andhra. This goddess was considered to be the number one stronghold spiritually of the state. And the brother I work with in India felt that we were to go there and I was to preach right there in that city. And I felt from the Lord, have an Elijah confrontation. Make a public challenge. Who is the real God? Yahweh or Kanaka Durga? Not to call down fire from heaven, but simply to preach the gospel and the authority of the spirit and to challenge this false God. We were in India for almost a month. This was towards the end of the trip. But as the days went on, I started to feel spiritual oppression come on me. And I realized this is exactly what I felt a few years earlier. This is Jezebel again. I felt that same thing, that fear, 
that lack of authority, that emasculating uh, in my life. So I asked Brandon in Monica Durga about this false god. I said, what does her statue look like? And he said to me, oh, brother, she is a beautiful warrior goddess, and she is holding in what many hands she has, and in one of her hands, she's holding the head of the giant that she killed. I thought, that sounds like Jezebel. And then he said, brother, something very, very strange. He said, once a year, think of this, once a year, her male followers dress up like women for one month and wear makeup. The war on gender, turning men into women, emasculating men, turning women into men, remarkable. Now, Kanaka Durga has gone further. Kanaka Durga is now the god of the homosexuals and the transgenders in India. Not only so, the new statue of Kanaka Durga is half man, half woman. We were really dealing with a Jezebelic stronghold. I want to read something to you quickly, and then I want to pray with you, because you are in the midst of this. And when you try to speak up, when you try to stand, you will be crushed down. You will be attacked if you are not empowered by the Spirit together. If you do not break this demonic stronghold in prayer and fasting, you will not be able to push through. You will be silenced in so many ways, and you know the push that's been coming against the church in Sweden for several decades now to silence you in so many ways. I received an email from a godly woman. She and her husband are very strong, solid Christians, men and women of prayer, probably in their 70s. And she wrote this to me. When we were in Washington, D.C. last year, we ac accidentally got caught up in a demonstration against Justice Kavanaugh. You might be aware of the fact that President Trump has appointed two very strong conservative justices to our Supreme Court. And there is the possibility that they could overturn our pro-abortion ruling from 1973, which has resulted in the death of more than 60 million babies. And because these justices have been appointed, there has been massive protest. There, there were protesters scratching the doors of the Supreme Court and pounding on the doors to try to stop uh, these men from being appointed, specifically the second one, Justice Kavanaugh. So she said she and her husband were in Washington, D.C., our nation's capital, during the demonstrations against him. She said, the next morning, when I thought about what we encountered the previous day, I realized how dark the atmosphere had been in the midst of the protesters. After we got home, I felt as though we had picked up something while in the Capitol and asked for prayer at our house group. She then says this, it was at this time that my husband began to slip into a state of deep depression. Does that speak to some of you, my friends? She said, to give a few details, he didn't want to live. Remember Elijah? Let me just die. He didn't want to live. He felt he was a total failure in every area. He became intensely fearful of everything and acted irrationally at times. And he felt he had failed God and that God was angry with him. Is that what some of you are going through? We've identified it. We've recognized it. It's the spirit of Jezebel. He has received ministry by several people over this past year and has received some relief. This past week, while we were driving home from Washington, D.C., we listened to an interview about your new book, Jezebel's War with America. I knew about this Jezebel spirit, but had never linked it to Elijah's reaction to Jezebel. As you explained your experiences, we heard almost exactly the same things that he has been suffering through. 
Now we understand what and who we are fighting. 2 Kings 9, beginning in verse 30. Jehu, who has been raised up by God to bring down the kingdom and the dynasty of Ahab. Jehu went to Jezreel. He's just killed the line of Ahab. When Jezebel heard about it, she put on eye makeup, arranged her hair, and looked out of a window. As Jehu entered the gate, she asked, Have you come in peace, you Zimri, you murderer of your master? So she's taunting him, but she's also trying to seduce him. He looked up at the window and called out, Who is on my side? Who? Then it says this, Two or three eunuchs looked down at him. Two or three men who had been castrated. They looked down at him. Throw her down, Jehu said. So they threw her down, and some of her blood spattered the wall and the horses as they trampled her under foot. Again, we're not talking about a person or hurting a person. We're talking about spiritual powers. But notice, it is the castrated men, the eunuchs, who throw Jezebel down. And that's what must happen now. The men of God who have lost their authority, the men of God who have been cowering in fear, the men of God who have been seduced by pornography, they must cast Jezebel down in Jesus' name. They must repent of the uncleanness or compromise in their own life. They must acknowledge the fear and the intimidation. They must cry out to God in Jesus' name, and then together as one, we must cast Jezebel down. The godly women who have been stripped down by Jezebel, you've lost your faith, you've lost your confidence, you've lost that flow of the Spirit, You've been pulled down and you now believe the lies of the enemy. We must break this spirit in Jesus' name. So I honor you, my friends. We are on the front lines together. Although I'm not with you physically, I'm with you in spirit. And I can tell you in Jesus' name that Jezebel has been defeated by the cross, by the blood of Jesus, and by the resurrection of Jesus. He alone is Lord and Jezebel and every demonic power and Satan himself must bow the knee to Jesus so I will pray a general prayer and then turn things over to my dear brother Lars whom I love and honor and esteem I will pray my prayer and then I'll be joining with you in faith as you continue before the Lord Father in Jesus name we submit ourselves to you. We humble ourselves before you. Where we have sinned, where we have walked in ungodly ways, I ask you to wash us clean. Forgive us, Lord. Where we have compromised, where we have sought to save our lives rather than obey you, forgive us, wash us, cleanse us. This day, we break the power of of Jezebel this day in Jesus name we break the spirit of fear and intimidation and oppression and depression and emasculizing we break these things in the name of Jesus and speak freedom and liberty and hope and deliverance may the church of Sweden rise up and cast Jezebel down and may you have mercy, Lord, on this great nation with a great calling in you. Grant repentance, Father. May the people of the country realize they have cast off the ways of life and chosen the way of death. Bring Sweden to its knees. And bring revival in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. 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 Vänner, 
Ska vi välja att ta en strid mot de här andemakterna? Amen, amen, amen. Och halleluja. Och Fader i himmelen. Vi kan se att det här har invaderat våra länder. Och specifikt vårt land Sverige här. Och Herre, nu ber vi om förvarmande. Vi ber om en omvändelse, Herre. Vi ber att män ska bli män igen, Herre. Halleluja. Och vi ber. Amen. Halleluja. 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 Och vi beder att våra systrar, att de ska bli kvinnor som du har tänkt, Herre. I den ljuvliga kallelse som du har gett dem, Herre. Vi, vi beder att de här förvirringen som har kommit in, Herre, att den ska brytas i andevärlden nu. Över våra länder. Halleluja. Halleluja. Tack för att vi får ta en ställning, Herre. En ståndpunkt. Både mot den här Ahab-mentaliteten som ligger och tjurar på sängen och inte vill göra någonting. Och Isabel som håller kontrollen och tömmarna. Vi vill bryta med det nu, Fader, för att vi ska kunna komma in i det som du har tänkt i våra länder. Halleluja! Prisat vara Herrens underbara namn. Tack för din underbara skapelseordning som vi bejakar. Till man och kvinna skapade han dem. Halleluja Till att vara en skapelse efter Guds avbild Han skapade människan till man och till kvinna Och det säger vi ja till Halleluja Åh, prisa vara Herrens namn Det händer någonting här nu